Hi everybody. Unless you've been living under a rock or in some remote part of the world where you don't have internet access or maybe even outer space, you've probably heard about React. And the reason is simple. React is pretty awesome. Everyone is using it these days to build their websites, their web apps and, and whatnot. So in this video, we're gonna take a quick overview of what React is and why everyone is so crazy about it. And we also use this video as a starting point for a series of videos that are gonna help demystify React development so that you can build really cool apps using React as well. So without any further delays, let's get started. So to talk about React, let's talk about web apps first. Now I'm sure you'll agree that the web apps we use today look and feel much nicer than what they did back in the day, let's say five years ago or in 10 years ago, or even if you really wanna date yourself, back when web apps were displayed using nothing but Times New Roman font. So what they look and feel like is very different, but more importantly, how they are built has also changed significantly. And I don't mean the tools or the languages or the language you know, constructs. What I mean is the approach you use for building these apps. So to help highlight that, let's take an example. And this example is not a running example. It's, a, it's just some mockups of a simple page. Let's say this could be an app for a music browser. We have a search box, you have some categories, and you have some results that get displayed based on, based on what you're doing. Now, let's compare how this app is gonna be built using technologies that we might use today compared to how they were traditionally built back in the day. So back in the day, you'd have built that app using what's known as a multi-page design. And the way this app is built is exactly as the title specifies. You literally build them with multiple pages. You might have a home page called index.htm, and depending on what you do, let's say you search for something, your results might show up in a page called search results at HTM, and each navigation, each interaction you do will take you further deeper into your app, which will probably require a whole different page of its own. And as you can see, that's simple, it kind of makes sense, but it's not the best user experience. And at this point, all of us are really used to experiences based on what we see every day on our mobile devices, or even our desktop where apps are just really fluid and they don't really have this jarring effect where everything you see and everything you've done is completely destroyed and recreated again, this you know, giant flash of change. So no longer is this really the, the cool way of building apps. The cool way of building apps is this. You use something known as a single page app model or SPA or SPA for short. And the way this app works is at a high level very similar to how we built apps and how we made them work with the multi-page design apps. People still click on links, there's still navigation, all these interactions and gestures are still going to be the same. Now what changes is what we mean by navigation. So instead of going from one physical page to another, regions of your page, fragments of your page will be updated instead. So instead of, let's say, navigating from your index.htm to search results, you might just have the search results change in the red region you see here or your item details or any other part of your page. And what's nice about this is that it more closely mimics how we tend to use apps today, but it also tends to maintain context. Any, thing that the user might have done, any selection they might have made or anything they might have made in a page that doesn't need to be changed will still remain as is, which just creates a more consistent, much nicer experience overall. And single page apps are pretty much the de facto standard that all the apps you use today, like Facebook and Twitter and Gmail and all of that, tend to be built on. So, you know, it's nothing new. It's the same old, same old that we are familiar with. But the nice thing with single page apps is also what makes them kind of bad, is that they're also challenging to build. So it often takes a great deal of engineering resources to get it built and especially to get it built right. And some of these challenges revolve around first, the bulk of your time in a single page application will be spent keeping your data in sync with your UI. When you're navigating physically from one page to another, you don't have to worry too much about this because everything is saw in your previous page, it's destroyed and it's recreated from scratch, which means you don't really worry too much about trying to make sure that what you see on screen matches your data models. And the more complex your app is, the more complicated that, that syncing logic basically becomes. The second challenge, is that manipulating the DOM is really, really slow. Now, there's something that you really don't have direct control over. It's something the browser vendors need to do a better job with. But ultimately, no matter how much optimizations you see in your browsers, the pages we are building, the web apps we tend to use, are very complex. They have dozens, hundreds, if not thousands of HTML elements. And you might think that making one minor change on one element is actually pretty fast. But in reality, even minor changes tend to have this cascading effect where they take up a lot of CPU power and take up a lot of time. And it's one of the biggest reasons why websites and web apps tend to feel more clunky when you compare them to more native apps that you know people are using on various mobile devices. 
And the last challenge is that working with HTML templates can be a pain. If you're not familiar with HTML templates, what this really means is that for a lot of your pages, a lot of the content in your apps and, and is gonna be duplicated. And instead of creating this markup over and over again, you just create a copy of it and you just use an in-memory version of it. And if you've used HTML templating in other languages like Mustache or Ember or other frameworks, you know that it could be easier. So HTML templates can be a pain if you've never used them. And if you are familiar with them, you know that there's some rough edges that we can definitely smooth out. Now, all these problems are bad for people like us who are building simple, simple websites. Now, imagine you're a developer of a massive single page application, like let's say Facebook or Instagram or any of the other sites out there. But I'm focusing on Facebook and Instagram because this is a problem that they encountered. And instead of trying to have a band-aid solution or try to just suffer through and try to make some of these things work, they decided to solve it in a more, more comprehensive way. They decided to build something completely new. They decided to not just solve some of these problems we saw earlier, but also kind of revisit how app development for a single page app model should really be done. You know, it's just really the best way to build them. And so the solution, as you can imagine, now, you know, insert orchestral music, heavenly angel singing, or whatever you use to indicate something awesome happening right now. And that thing is React. So to help solve those problems, to help make single page applications just more feasible and easier to build, Facebook created React, which they use extensively on not just facebook.com, but also on Instagram once they purchased them. Instagram is using React extensively. And now you have dozens, hundreds, thousands, and tens of thousands of sites that use it extensively. Now, let's talk about why React is awesome and why and how it solved some of the challenges we kind of outlined earlier. So the first thing is this. Managing state, we talked about, is, is a challenge in single page apps. With React, you don't worry about it at all. All you care about is what the final state of your app will be given any sort of interaction. So what this means is that you have a page, you have some content displayed, and all you need to define is the final state of that content. You no longer need to worry about how your content goes from point A to point B, what HTML elements to modify, or what data models need to be kept up to date in order to map to HTML changes and to be done so that the user sees something new. The end state is all that React cares about, which is very similar to an advantage I called out about the multi-page design apps you're physically navigating from one page to another. Second, React provides lightning fast DOM manipulation. And the way it does it is by trying to figure out what the minimal set of changes are needed to make a change that you wanna do represented on the screen. And this is done by using what's known as a virtual DOM, which is not by modifying the DOM directly, but by modifying an in-memory copy, an in-memory representation of the DOM. And then from there, figuring out the most optimal path for each browser that you need to take to make these changes without causing all these performance implications that we kind of highlighted that DOM manipulation has today. And the final part, or not the final part, but one of the other next to final part is how you know, React allows you to create truly composable UIs. We talked about templating, we talked about just how to make some of your content more reusable. In React, it's really hard to not, by default, be forced into creating something that's more composable. So you might see some UI at the end that looks like what you see on screen, but each part of that UI, each individual component of it, is actually made up of its own small piece, that is, its own self-contained unit. And we'll talk more about it in the, in the future, you know, the, what these are called, known as React components, and we'll spend a fair amount of time talking about that, but just know that by default in React, you're gonna be building UI that is more composable, which might seem painful at first, but in the long run will save you a lot of time, and it's gonna be a very convenient way for building your app as well. And I'm gonna say the most controversial change for last, and that is this. The way you define visuals in React is by defining them entirely in JavaScript. Now, I know that sounds really crazy and really complicated, but take a look at what the JavaScript we define looks like in the yellow box right there. You have some JavaScript, and what it looks like you're defining looks a lot like just HTML syntax. You have some divs, you have some h1 tags, and you have a closing div. And this HTML like syntax has a name. It's known as JSX. It's React special flavor of HTML that is, I wanna say 90% identical to the HTML you'd normally write, but there are some quirks that we'll cover later. But the important thing to notice is that you're defining your visuals in JavaScript using a format that is entirely familiar to you, which is this HTML. And the end result, what React does, is turn it into you know really messy create element and normal DOM APIs. But the way you define it is in this very simple, very beautiful format called JSX. Now, Here's why JSX is kind of advantageous. 
The first thing is very obvious. You're able to define your visuals and what you see on the screen. Use a syntax that's very familiar, which is HTML. But remember, you're still inside JavaScript. That means you can dynamically do all sorts of crazy things to your HTML that you wouldn't really be able to do otherwise. And second, your visuals in JavaScript often live in the same location. And this seems like a, a non-issue for a lot of us who have very simple content, but for more complex apps when you have dozens and dozens of visuals that all need to work together in some cohesive way, you'll need to, you'll, you'll appreciate what happens when you have all the visuals and all your JavaScript on the same location. And you know, it's one of the things that we just need to see it to believe it. So the major takeaway is this. React is just a V in an MVC setup, quite an awesome V at that. You know, it kind of provides not only the view layer, but also a lot of the view management, and a lot of things that are very complicated in that space. And you can definitely use React and some of the extensions to handle some of the model and controller part as well. But if you don't want to, you can write plain JavaScript, which is my preference, or you can also use a framework like Ember or Angular or any host of frameworks that you might already be using to make the, the more nitty gritty data part of your application also work. So React is not very heavyweight in that sense. It really nicely builds on top of anything you may have already built. So there you have it, a, a lightning fast overview. Well, if you consider 15 minutes a lightning fast overview of what React is and some of the things it brings to the table that make it really unique and how it solves some of the problems with single page app development, which is why people really tend to crave it, tend to really look for it in some of their projects they're building. And so, like we mentioned, this is just the first video in a series of videos we're gonna do where we're gonna shift away from the overview and start actually writing some code, writing some markup, JSX, all of that to actually build more increasingly complex apps as time goes on. And so with that, if you need any help or you have any questions, post on the forums at forum.group.com where I and others will be more than happy to help you out. Of course, tell your friends and enemies if you like this video, hit subscribe to be notified of future videos that I tend to post. And if you want bite-sized updates on not just React topics, but on web development topics in general with the occasional cat video thrown in there, follow me at Krupa. And of course, if you want to learn from something that isn't a video or pages you click in a browser, check out my new book, Learning React, where you learn about not just this topic, but a host of other topics that will make React development easy, and in my opinion, also pretty fun. So check it out at Amazon or any physical bookstore out there in both paperback and Kindle editions. All right, guys, I will see you all next time.